So Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has been out for a few days now and people are losing their minds, mostly due to all the unexpected cameos, some that we sort of knew were coming and some that we hoped and we got. Uh, so in this video, I'll be covering and ranking all the big cameos and what they actually mean for the future of the MCU. So let's begin. Number one, if you watch the movie, it should come as no surprise, John Krasinski as Reed Richards' Mr. Fantastic. That was the best cameo of the entire movie i'm sure it happened in your theater i've seen the movie twice already and both times the theater almost collapsed from cheers let's give it up for fan casting the power what power we fans or stands as they say today uh we have uh all of you including myself have been asking for him as reed richards since a quiet place uh came out and we made it happen i mean it's crazy how the fan base today uh can be heard like this and let's give it up to marvel for listening and delivering it for the fans that's a true relationship right there it can also backfire on them uh, i'll admit but this one they got it right uh, obviously as cool as it was to see him it was terrible to see him last what about five minutes in total and then get literally strung out by dreamwalker wanda i mean the gasps were just as loud as the cheers when we first saw him uh he didn't even use his powers it was a bit lame but seeing him uh as mr fantastic was enough for me for me um i'll admit i've seen many people already complain that it was too short the entire illuminati sequence was way too short uh in my first viewing maybe due to excitement and the adrenaline that i have from watching the movie i loved it the whole illuminati sequence was my favorite part of the movie but after my second time watching the movie yes it was very short and uh it was a total missed opportunity uh, we've been, I think we've been a little bit too spoiled by the Russo brothers, by Endgame, by Infinity War and other movies. The battles in those movies were long and amazing. Uh, so this felt and it fell a little bit short. Um, so I was hoping for more. Still, I think, like I said in my movie review, it's all due because of the reshoots possibly cutting many scenes that were already shot and other cameos that were in the movie a lot of those were scrapped i don't know the, the reasons why i believe they're waiting to use those big surprises in other movies coming out for during the phase or for future phases <coughs> so i think that's why it's just a teeny bit short the sequence however Going back to John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic, what does that mean moving forward? Honestly, I don't, I don't want to burst everybody's bubble, but I don't think it means much. And hear me out. At this point, I still believe it's up in the air if he will be casted in the fantastic four movie if you go to his indb uh, page it says that he, it's it's under his filmography and it says that it's rumored that he's rumored to be in the movie that could be 50 50. it could mean that they don't want to give it away yet or it could mean that it really nobody really knows yet i have a feeling that um he's not casted yet as Mr. Fantastic uh, in, and also his wife Emily Blunt uh, which we all want them to be you know Sue Storm and Reed Richards uh, for us fans it seemed like a perfect fit but the fact that it hasn't been officially announced even after the movie already premiered and millions of people have seen him to me that's worrisome okay this feels to me like it was a one-time bit to appease the fans 
especially since he was from universe 838 and not ours 616 like here you go here's you know you've been asking for john there you go you have him in this universe but in our universe which is the movie it might not be him who knows there's also one line that i noticed on on my second viewing i don't know if you guys noticed um that when he comes out for the first time and i think people missed it because the whole theater was cheering so loud uh dr strange says something along the lines of oh you from the 1960s so what does that mean does does reed richards already uh have a name in our reality but in the 1960s so could the movie take place in the 1960s are they stuck in some random universe somewhere and they'll return in our present i don't know but that seemed interesting to me so if you watch the movie again please try to listen to that conversation again and let me know if you have the same thoughts that i do but going back to john you know remember he became a big star after a quiet place so i'm sure he is working on a quiet place three because part two also did a lot of money i'm not sure if he has another jack ryan season i don't know if that's over yet i don't watch that show so if if there's still more seasons to be to be filmed again that'll be difficult for him to do a marvel movie but chances are that he's pretty bus busy you know he he made a lot of movie as a director and as a star of a quiet place so he is being thought out uh sought out lately um so he also and I, I don't know how long the contract is but he also signed a contract with paramount so i wonder if he has even the rights to work with marvel uh on such long projects like a movie that usually come attached with multi-project or multi-year deals you know but after his appearance and the fan reaction i think it's safe to say that we loved him we need him and marvel needs to fight for him so for number two obviously we have to give it up to the best mutant ever professor xavier how can we not have him high on this list um again we all knew true fans we all knew he was going to be in the movie because in the trailer when he says that line we should tell him the truth we all quickly recognized it we know it was him so it was awesome to see him again to come back and again we have to give it up for patrick stewart for being so humble and and wanting to keep playing that role for just for fan service he does it just for us because chances are that he's not going to come back uh to the mcu he's not going to do any more x-men films i don't believe he will as you saw in the movie he is getting older and even though he's getting older to me i think that works better for the character because he seems more he seems wiser and more like a father figure so that kind of works to his advantage but again he's a busy man he has that picard show on paramount the star trek show so chances are that he might not come back that's to be determined however his appearance was magnificent my favorite part of the uh the entire sequence or or the entire part of him being in the movie number one it was he was so true they made him so true to the character i love the part where even though he knows that all the doctor stranges from the other universes have failed have had a little bit of an evil side to them always going rogue and taking the dark hold he still said people should deserve a second time and this guy deserves one he might be different and that is just so professor x always having that positivity i loved it okay and then the other thing that i loved was the moment when uh he used his powers to get into wanda's uh head and that entire sequence of him being inside her opening that door in that uh in her mind and seeing the rock seeing the little television of one division and then her being inside coming out clearly showing that she is trapped the one division from that universe that that uh 
our Wanda to control of that other Wanda. She's there in her mind. She's trapped. That was so, that's like a page out of the comics. It was fantastic. And even though it was beautiful, then he gets killed. And that was shocking. I think that was, even though he was the last one to get killed out of all the big cameos, that was the biggest, I think, gasp that everybody had because nobody was expecting it i even heard someone it was almost like a crying cackle or something i i think it was a woman that was surprised that they did that to this man and maybe she had kids next to her and she's like i can't believe that this is happening because it was horrific but i think that was one of the biggest jump jump scares if not the biggest one on the entire movie however what does this mean so what that Professor X was in this movie. This is huge. I hope people understand the uh, the importance of having him in the movie. Why? Because this is the first time that there has been a mutant in the MCU. Finally, after years and years of them trying to acquire, of Disney acquiring uh, Fox and now acquiring the rights for X-Men, they can add them into the MCU and this is the first time. So this is a huge, uh, this is hugely important because now we have an entryway for all of the mutants, all of our favorite mutants and X-Men to start showing up. Even though he's from a different universe, now that we know that the multiverse exists, they can either come from other universes, maybe they're in our world. I mean, there's so many possibilities, but at least it's the first entryway to X-Men. So everybody should be very happy about this. Something else that I noticed about the movie, and I could be wrong, this could be, this is complete, complete speculation, but that one scene where uh, Doctor Strange and um, America starts going, they start going from universe to universe really quickly and they start changing, you know, from different places to animation to uh, painting colors. There's one place that they stop briefly, and we see it on the trailer. It's like a, almost like a, a green uh, world, like a big jungle, and we see dinosaurs. Could that be the dinosaur world of, of the X-Men? I remember in the animated series, there was an episode or a few episodes where they were in some sort of a planet or universe where there were... Um, um dinosaurs so if anybody out there knows a little bit more about this please let me know um i didn't actually look for that to research it but i'm pretty sure that could be something uh mutant related and then another cool little easter egg when professor x comes out for the first time and we and we hear him you know we should tell him the truth and he's coming out of his little like uh, hovering uh, chair, wheelchair, we hear the 90s animated song, the 90s uh, cartoon song. Ah, it was beautiful. That, that is nostalgia at its best. Again, that is um, pure fan service that Marvel is giving us. So I loved it. Also, remember, there is a uh, animated series for X-Men coming to Disney Plus pretty soon. Uh, I have a source that told me a little bit about it, and it looks fantastic. It's pretty much a sequel or a continuation to that animated series from the 90s with the same style of animation and everything. So that's the best animated series in my opinion ever at least to me so it'll be so cool when that comes out and i loved that they gave us that little moment with the with the music behind him like hovering on his chair so number three and po quite possibly the coolest one of the entire illuminati uh players uh was captain marvel but it's not the one that you think it's actually Captain Marvel with Maria Rambeau. Yes, it's not Carol Danvers. It is her best friend, Maria Rambeau, who in that universe actually is the one who, I guess, got the powers from the Tesseract and became Captain Marvel. That was so cool to see. And the reasons why it's cool to see is because it is sort of, of a callback 
to the comics because in the comics, uh, Maria Rambeau, or maybe it was Monica, I'm confused, but Maria Rambeau, she was uh, called Captain Marvel for a while, even though later they changed her to Photon. But in this movie, it's Maria Rambeau who is Captain Marvel. And the best little Easter egg that I loved about it is that her costume, just like in the comics, was black and white. So that was really lovely to see. And I loved uh, Lashana Lynch is the actress. She was so tough and she was so serious and she meant all business. She was like, I am the strongest one of all of us in this Illuminati uh, uh, council. So don't mess with us, especially with me. And you could feel it from her. She is so good. She's also the last one uh, to survive or at least to last the longest in the uh, in the entire sequence and she really held her own I thought for a second there she could take uh, Wanda on but as you know if you saw the movie again she died just like everybody else and I quite don't understand how she died because for those of you who have seen the movie uh, she falls to the ground and a humongous statue falls on her and she gets squished and die. All we see is her hand kind of like limp and that's how we know, oh, she's dead. Oh my God. So I don't, I don't know if the movie portrayed it properly, but it seemed like Wanda, when they were fighting against each other and they were very close and their powers were kind of like, you know, uh, uh, connecting, it seems like Wanda might have taken her powers away from Captain Marvel and that's why when she fell to the ground and the statue fell on her that's why it killed her so that's my theory because it wasn't really well explained or portrayed right or maybe she's still alive and she'll come back in another movie because again if you don't see a dead body and you actually see them dead dead they're not dead in the Marvel world. So there is still a possibility that that character, Maria Rambeau, as Captain Marvel, might show up later on. That would be pretty cool. I also liked that um, her, that she was the last one to, to uh, keep fighting against Wanda. Because again, she is Captain Marvel. She is supposed to be that strong, very strong, if not stronger than almost everybody else that we've seen in the MCU. So it was nice to see that the order in which they all died kind of portrayed her as the strongest because that is how it should be. Number four. This one, I was a little bit disappointed, but number four is Captain Carter. Yes, in this, uh, in this world, it wasn't Steve Rogers who became Captain America. It was Peggy. She is the Captain Carter, just like we saw in the What If animated series in Disney+. Plus. And if you ask me, out of all the episodes of the Disney Plus What If series, I would rank in the top three captain carter's episode it was fantastic storytelling and it was great to see how captain carter would be portrayed if we had her in a movie she was strong she was powerful she was feminine at the same time but she kicked ass it was a great episode so i was a bit disappointed for her portrayal in the movie only because she died so fast she pretty much didn't put up a fight you know uh she looked great she looked the part she looked strong she looked feminine and beautiful and then when it's when it's uh uh her time to fight she, i think she lasted about two minutes she got like one hit on wanda maybe and then she gruesomely got killed wanda split her in half with her own shield it was almost like mortal kombat kung lao fatality where she chopped her in half how did marvel get away with that how did disney get away with that i don't know but that was a hard one to swallow her death so that's the only thing that i didn't like because there was so much potential for a cool fight and the best part of her entire sequence is the moment where wanda i forgot what she says uh, like, don't get tired, and then she says, oh, I can do this all day, which is the classic line, right? The classic Captain America line, 
And I, I, when she said that, I was like, I was like cheering. I was like yelling. I was like, here we go. This is going to be a great fight sequence. And then boom, boom, whoosh, shot, chopped in half. It was too fast. So again, I will hopefully, hopefully one day we'll know that is due to reshoots and to cutting of certain scenes. But I feel like her fight should have been longer and could have been a lot better. She is Captain Carter. She can handle way more than she did. But anyways, that's what we got. So number five, Black Bolt. Who, you might ask? That's exactly what I asked myself. Who the hell is that? I recognized the outfit when I saw him. So I realized, oh, that's from the Inhumans. But I don't know anything about the Inhumans. I have never read or researched anything on them. I've also never watched the show that was on TV that apparently was terrible. So when he showed up, I was like, okay, who's this guy? Why is he there? I also didn't know anything about his powers, but I did like when he actually used them when they did that flashback that showed how they had to kill uh, Doctor Strange from 838, and he was the one to uh, give the final blow to kill him. His power set was pretty cool to see. And it's also very smart because showing the way that he used his powers was a little bit of uh, a foreshadowing what was going to be his death in a few minutes after that and we know what happens uh he uses his voice to i guess send send out some sort of huge sonic wave or whatever that sound wave that kills because it's that strong so what does wanda do she shuts his mouth he can't make any sound and the one little sound he makes inside blows his brain out and that was, again, shocking, too, because that's the first one that died, and I don't think anybody expected any of these characters to die. So when he died and his head exploded, everybody just, like, they were all stunned. Like, what? Did they really just do that? Are they going to do it to the rest of them? And then that's when the sequence started. So uh, it was cool to see him, but... I don't think anybody really cares to see Black Bolt, and there's no way that guy's returning or any of the Inhumans. I doubt it. I highly doubt it. So that's my ranking of all the cameos in the new Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I really want to hear from you guys, so let me know if you agree with my list. What is your ranking of all the characters? Which one was your favorite? Which ones were your least favorite? Was that even your favorite sequence of the movie? The Illuminati sequence? It was for me, even though I wanted more. So let me know in the comments below. And again, guys, thank you for watching my videos. I am Frank Javier, and I am signing off.